Christopher West here, Theology of the Body Guy. Today we are going to be talking about the source and summit of everything. We're going to be talking about the theology of Christ's body given up for us in the Eucharist. At the source and summit of everything we believe as Catholics is the body of Christ given up for us. There's so many ways we could look at the Eucharist. We could explain the Eucharist. Today, I'm going to share, through the gift of St. John Paul II's insights, a particular way of unpacking this mystery of mysteries. John Paul II says that the Eucharist is the sacrament of the bridegroom and of the bride. He says that Christ gave us the Eucharist to reveal for us the meaning of masculinity and femininity, and the call of the two to become one flesh. Here he's just drawing from the teaching of Ephesians chapter 5, which you've heard me talk about on this channel before. Here St. Paul quotes from the book of Genesis, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Then he adds, This is a great mystery, and it refers to Christ and the church. Christ left his father in heaven. Christ left the home of his mother on earth to give up his body for his bride so that we might become one flesh with him. Where do we become one flesh with Christ? It's the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the sacrament of the bridegroom and of the bride. Christ is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. And the goal of the Eucharist is that we would be in holy communion with him. The Eucharist is nothing other than the sacramental representation of what happened at the cross. And what is it that happened at the cross? It was the consummation of the mystical marriage of Christ the bridegroom and the church the bride. Now, I know what you're thinking, especially if you're unfamiliar with theology of the body and my presentation of it, you might be, whoa, 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 that's his mother at the foot of the cross. How can she be the bride? The Baltimore Catechism says, in the flesh, of course, she's always his mother. But in the spirit, Mary is the bride. She's the symbol. That's important. We have to read the symbols going on here. She's the symbol of the church. And the consummation that is taking place is something mystical. A little story. I never met my father-in-law. He died when my wife was a girl. But I admire him tremendously because of this story. He married my mother-in-law in the mid-60s. It was a Saturday. They consummated their love. They became one flesh on their wedding night. The next morning, they went to Mass together for the first time as husband and wife. Coming back from receiving the Lord in the Eucharist, my father-in-law was in tears. And his new bride said to him, Honey, what is it? Through his tears, he said, for the first time in my life, I understood the meaning of those words. This is my body given up for you. Make no mistake, when all the smoke is cleared, when all the confusion is cast out, the deepest truth and meaning of our creation as male and female and the call of the two to that holy communion is to point us to this holy communion the Holy Communion of this man and this woman, Christ, and the church. I'm not making this stuff up. Do you know what we're putting on the altar? We don't tend to think this way because we don't tend to go very deep here. Bread, where do we get bread? And why bread? Why wine? Why not graham crackers and beer? Something's going on here with the bread and the wine. Bread comes from the crushed seed of the wheat stalk. In fact, the seed that we use to crush to make bread, it's actually called the endosperm, the seed within the seed. The wine comes from the crushed ovary of the grapevine. We don't tend to think of it, but that's what grapes are. We're putting these symbols of nature's fertility, nature's fruitfulness, right on the altar. And the priest prays a prayer of thanksgiving for this fruit of the earth, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. And then he prays, let the Holy Spirit come upon these gifts like the dewfall 
what happens next? The fertility of the earth becomes the fertility of Mary's womb. It becomes the body, the blood of Jesus Christ. Now here's where, just like 2,000 years ago, when Jesus first presented this teaching, people are like, what? how can this man give us his flesh to eat? This is a hard teaching. And indeed, from one perspective, it does seem like a hard teaching. From another perspective, maybe it's not so hard to believe after all that bread and wine can become the body and blood of Christ. Think of it from this perspective. Every time Jesus ate bread and drank wine when he walked on this earth, it became his body and blood. It's called digestion. And if that's for real, and it is, it's a biological fact, why should it surprise us that at the Mass, we can experience a kind of supernatural digestion, if you will. And before our very eyes, bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Jesus. For both Jesus and for us, eating involves divinization, but in reverse fashion. When Jesus ate bread and wine, he divinized it. When we eat what appears to be bread and wine, but has become the body and blood of Jesus Christ, it divinizes us. This is the great exchange. These are the holy nuptials. This is what makes the Eucharist the sacrament of the bridegroom and the bride. The representation of what happened, as St. Augustine says, at the marriage bed of the cross, where the bridegroom says to the bride, this is my body given up for you. It's as simple as marital math, if you will, when we understand these things rightly. When Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. It's as if he were saying, unless the bride be in union with the bridegroom, she cannot conceive eternal life. This is our faith. This is the mystery of our bodies. This is the source and summit of everything we believe. This is the body of Christ given up for us. Come, all of you who are hungry. Come, all of you who are thirsty. Eat the bread come down from heaven. Drink that blood that gives us everlasting life. So much more could be said, should be said, about the Eucharist as the fulfillment of our deepest desires, as the source and summit of our faith. Can't say it here, but I do say it in the courses I teach for the Theology of the Body Institute. And I invite you to learn more by clicking the link below. Become part of our patron community and get ongoing formation in this Theology of the Body. If you enjoyed this video, share it with somebody who needs to hear it. Subscribe, share a comment. We want you to be part of what we're doing here. Till next time.